those are very, very subtle in you. which in a logical format, in logical form, it is self-contradictory. Thus, in order to relate to it, to absorb it and to understand it, acquire it, we have to resort to a, to a higher sense in our intellect. Because logic function, functions in a in a step by step manner. And in terms of this step by step manner cause and effect, <coughs> we have said that if Hashem knows ahead what the person is going to do how he's going to choose his path, then when the person comes to do it, he is bound to do it that way. It's no longer a matter of choice. For as the Raman points out, if at that point the person could choose to do it differently than Hashem knew, that means Hashem's knowledge is not, is not new, it's not complete, it's not perfect. It's a supposition. It's a possibility, but didn't really know exactly what the person is going to do. But that is not possible. This is not what we are, we are, we are, we are exposed, the, the God that we are exposed to. Therefore, Hashem knew everything, and yet the human being is given full a, a jurisdiction over his actions. And, and this is called free choice. Bechira Chofshis. When a person chooses to do something, it is at that moment that this action is born. It was created by his choice. This is that So this, as I said, this is something which, which eludes our logical thinking process. And yet this is the principle of Bechir. So the Rebbe explains, explains not in our, in our, our logical level, but explains how the thing is, is in reality, in truth. And it is our duty to find that concept of truth in our Seichel. And what is the truth? The truth is that Hashem's knowledge is in a different realm. There are much higher um, a, a sense of, of orientation. So we had the motion for this, I don't know if you remember. Let me just quickly reiterate it. It's a motion which is only a motion, but nonetheless, it gives us a, an approach to understand this principle. And the motion was that when you go to a shear to learn to learn the nine machines, in order to learn Maxilus, you have to be in a certain location, at a certain time. In order to be there, in that location, you have to pass, you have to go from, pass a certain, certain streets and like a certain turns and so forth. All of these are contributors to, towards enabling you to be by the ship. Then you are at the ship. So when we say, and he is, 
that you are at the shear. This principle that you are in the place and you are at the shear. This being in the shear is totally unrelated to the location and the manner by, by which you got there. You cannot say you are at the shear because you took these turns and you, and you came there in this time. You are at the shear because you are at the shear in your soul and in, 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 in conviction. That is all that taking place. As if you flew down from heaven and you came to the sheep. Which means that you come into the sheep is what's called Bechir You decided to come to the sheep, and you went to the Although there is this knowledge that you're going to be at the Shir and, and it takes place in this place and so forth. That is, that being at the Shir and the place where it is and how you get it are in such a, a distant proximity. Where being at the Shir and being in this location are totally unrelated. You cannot say that I'm at this location because I want to be at the Shir, because I'm at the Shir. Being at the Shiva is a totally different and a much higher level. And different, that is not the cause why I'm over here. Hope you understand this. It should really lend itself to, to reflect. Because what really Coerce the person and force the person to be at the sheep is is an shomini. Which is <coughs> infinitely removed above the physical phenomenon of being in this location. And therefore, this is not the, the cause for being in this location. Never says, similarly, this is our, our motion, but this is the, the principle that ever says that Hashem's knowledge of Hashem's choice, of the, of the human being's choice, is at a level which is remote, complete, and a, and a much higher realm, principle, than his actions, and the choice of his actions. The very last thing that the Rebbe said we learned already, and I'm going to go back a little bit, because this is a very, uh, really, like a shock. The line right above the, the little kufi you give on the side. In the middle of that line, the Rebbe says the following. The shame for just as she is but Hashem's knowledge, does not compel the whole principle of his harvest of creation. His knowledge, blessed be he. The reason that the word Yisborech comes in here is to give us immediately an uplift and a sense, what are we talking about? His knowledge, whose knowledge? What kind of knowledge is it? It's a knowledge that is super worldly. It's a divine knowledge that if you mention that you have to you have to give it a, you, the right formation is if you praise it. Otherwise, how do you come to mention this in, in your in your real world, in your little world? We are being given permission, but we have to recognize who we're talking about. Hashem's knowledge, Hashem's blessed be he, his knowledge. In the Machrachas, as he in his house, does not compel, does not force it that, you, to, that should be a result of the whole principle of his house or creation. 
What, what is this about? His knowledge, what does he know? And then Yehobah explains, the Haga for all the Sheyodeya, the Amamash and the light that begins with that little mark of Prophet Gim. Sheyodeya, call her his house, that he knows the entire creation. Koi dem she needs have. He knows the entire creation before it came into being. Become welcome yet still. Ain zeh. This knowledge, this fact of this knowledge, is not machriach as his havus, does not compel the ultimate creation coming to be. I would, and I'm scratching to focus on the word his havus and existence, or, but uh, I'll leave it go for some time. Okay. His havus means coming to being the creation. The creation is not, it's, 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 it's conceptualized, um, 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 no, well known the whole human creation, but it does, does not, that knowledge has not resulted in the, in the creation. And what actually results in the creation? A, a focused action of creation. And the Rebbe explains further, that which is explained, in many places, that the world take care of immediately upon the moment when it enters Hashem's will and thought, as soon as the Rebbe had thought of the of the his harvest of the world. Miyad is how they immediately came to be, became created. So it, it means that before Hashem actually took action to create it, his knowing of the creation made it be. So how can we say that this idea is on a supreme level, which does not compel the, 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 the fulfillment of that knowledge? He's saying it happened immediately. The young is out. His knowledge is so fulfilling. The young is out. So the Rebbe explains again. This is the most subtle difference in this case. Hare, however, behold, loin is habu bebchinas mitzius yesh. Yes, they came into being, but they came. They did not come into being in a bechina, in a manner at the at the definition of mitzius yesh. Of materials of a present that's called a yesh. A yesh. A yesh means a self contained presence. We already spoke about yesh. But we will sort of reiterate or, or bring forth a, the, the, in, the, the principle again. And again, through a mushroom. Again, a very simple mushroom. A table is a structure composed of, of various pieces, components. And the, comp and, the, and the table comes not only from the pieces, but by putting the pieces together in a certain way. That's what a table is. It's a composite of pieces in a certain skillful manner. When we consider the table and we view the table from the perspective of its components, there are legs, there's a board, there are nails, there is, there is all of these things, then the table at that point is not a material it's not a real presence by its own definition. It's being made. And there is a maker, the human being, this, the, 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 the carpenter who is capable and, and, and is being made. 
it's not an entity that exists that you say, oh, okay, here it is. You can relate to it and refer to it directly as a table. You cannot do it, you can refer to it, you can refer to it to the function of being made an into a table. The CSH means that it is there as a final product, and nothing else has to be done to it. It is standing on its own right, on its own recognizance. That means CSH. That occurs, that comes to be, after the table is complete. Then it stands on its own. To be Mitzius Yesh, even though it was conceptualized ahead of time, that if you take a board and you take four legs and you put them together, it will look like a table. It will function like a table. In those, at the conceptual level, it is not a table yet. Even though it is projected as a table, but it's not a Mitzius Yesh. From that, and that, at that level, you see it as, as the, the result of its components. And the and the skill of the of the worker, <coughs> you don't see it as an entity in itself. So at, at the conceptual level, when a carpenter perceives a table, he does not see a table. He sees the functional aspect of how you make a table. Although it is very well designed in his mind, but the design includes the action of putting together. We said that the person has to have uh, understanding what they're doing when they're when they're doing it. I'm uh, sorry, what? Don't you have to? Don't we always say that the person has to have like the reality of what they're accomplishing? When yes, they're doing it? yes. But in order to do that, in order to do it, you have to you have to. Have, he has to relate to the components that make it happen. In order for him to to do it, he has to. Have, yes, he has to have an aim of what he wants to make, absolutely. But then, how does that come about? How are you going to connect the leg to the to the to the tabletop? He absolutely is is aware of the final product, but this is not what guides him. What guides him is what are the means by which you connect these things. What's the difference between a skillful car carpenter and, and, a, and, a, and a novice? Novice also knows how to put, what, where to put the leg. But how are you going to make, make it stand? He doesn't have an idea. Make it hold. I think this is a clear idea. There's no point of rehashing this. So, I'm also trying to understand, when he has the picture of, of a, a table, not of building it, but he has the final picture in his mind, then he relates to the components? When he sees the, pink, the, the final product, the table, does he see the table as having come into being in its final form? When you see a table, and it's a perfectly made table, would you be curious who made it? Who is the, the, the carpenter, the, the, this skillful carpenter made, who made it? Or will you say, no, nobody made it, just came down from heaven like this. It's fact the fact that it's very perfect. But you do not see it from, from the carpenter's projection and, and, and sense of reality. You see it from the carpenter's sense of uh, skill. Because in our world, that's what it is. Hashem 
does not look at things from a component perspective. Hashem, as we said many times, Hashem creates, Hashem created all the magician, he created, didn't create a nail and a finger and a leg and a, and a hand. He created a human being, but the human being in a perfect state where a human being is supposed to be. The way Hashem looks, looks at the human being, it's a perfect entity. It's not a compo composite of a humans. And the whole concept, the whole possibility of the human being missing or becoming sick or anything like that is totally strange to the way that Hashem looks at the human being. This is, in fact, the reason that if Hashem, there is a damage, it heals. Because the spirit that holds the human being together cannot be damaged. And that spirit is what forces it back together. But, but we're not capable of looking at ourselves in this way. Is that true? That is true. Well, we, yeah, do, we do strive for health and goodness, wholeness. I That's mean, right. There is the... but, but health means on a, on a functional level. We do, in answer to you, Borak, we do perceive things from that level. But you know when? When we recognize ourselves as Hashem's servants. When we can conceive and recognize that we are here in the world to serve God, then, then, we, see, we, then we, see, we relate to ourselves as the perfect entity, unit, the perfect creature. That's a, that, because there's a godly spirit that holds this, this entity together. It's not a component composite of, of worldly uh, units. When we make a bracha, we reach all the way up to the highest skies. And we put on film, whatever it is. It's a godly presence that follows us around under whatever circumstance we are. And inspires us all the time. Even if we are about to show them in a, in a country, in a veil, that spirit is still there and it is inspiring and and, and uh, and um, waking us up to, hey, Sadiq, where are you going? How are you profaning your, 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 your purity? How are you violating your connection to Hashem? If we should be able to, if we should make an attempt to bring to our consciousness this perception, then, yes, indeed, we are perfect human beings. And this is that Matthias Yesh. Hashem created Matthias Yesh. A final product. Without going through this, the steps of creating because this final product is the way God looks at, at the world. Just as in our muscle, a table is a human concept. It's not a component composite of, 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 of legs and board. Again, okay, we're going in the line that begins with Bibhinas Matthias Yesh. From Hashem's thought and will, the worlds were immediately created, as we said. 
as we could. However, they were not created immediately in a, in a, in a, in a, in a manner that they can, be, they can be referred to as Metzius Yesh. In other words, they were pre-known to being created. But at that knowledge, they, that this is not a Metzius Yesh. What, what is that that this knowledge actually referred to represent? What is the state of that knowledge, of that existence, that exists and doesn't exist? This is what we're going to identify now. In the parenthesis, the Metzius Yesh for because the Metzius of a Yesh Hare is a Yitzchad Shuz Gmura. This is what's called Yitzchad Shuz Gmura, a perfect and complete innovation. In the time when it comes to Metzius Yesh, it's a new entity completely without any any pre preconceived pre pre existent element. The components that exist for the, it's, uh, they, this is not what makes it change. It's a hischatus murder. It's a totally new present. The kingdom she is having, which means that before it came into being, loyhoyo mitzius or mitzusikla, its mitzius was not there at all. For, for this for this influence that it is a knowledge a new of his conscious, this is why it's called Yesh Mayan. A Yesh, a present, one second, a present, Mayayin. Mayayin means from nothing. Dover Milay Dover, something from not from non, non something. Okay, let me explain Dover Milay Dover. A table and its components. The components are not an, a, a, a real thing. The board and the, and the legs, and this is not a real thing. They're strewn out in, in the world. They have absolutely no significance. They don't have no presence. A table is a real present. Dover, mille dover. Yes, Hello. What is the what is the translation here of the word Matthias? How do we how do we is there a brief Matthias means a presence? A presence. 